Hey, this is Zach. Welcome back to the uh, Business from A to EZ podcast. I forgot what my own podcast is called. Uh, we are doing another interview today, and so I'm excited about that. Uh, Tucker and Justin will be back soon, but we've had a lot going on over the last couple of weeks, and so we're excited to do another interview. Like I said in the last one, if you are interested in being on the show, we would love to have you on. Go to our Facebook page, and uh, we will try to get uh, everything we need from you. And we'd love to interview you about your business. But today I'm excited to introduce you to a couple who is doing some great work out in Kansas. Today we're going to be interviewing Tiffany and Kelby Tomlinson. Uh, they met in uh, 2010 at college where Kelby was playing baseball. Kelby played baseball professionally for 10 years uh, for a couple of different organizations. They have three boys and they own and operate their own brick and mortar, brick and mortar store in liberal Kansas, and that is called Squints. They do eyewear. So without further ado, ado welcome uh, Kelby and Tiffany Tomlinson. Welcome, guys. Hey, hey. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. This is awesome. I, uh, I was, we were talking before. I'm, I'm excited to have you guys on just because it's something a little bit different. Most people that we talk to or that we kind of talk business about are very service based um, sure. and no retail at all, but you guys have the retail side. Yes. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of get into that. It's going to yeah, be, it's, it's going to be cool. It's a very unique industry um, eyeglasses and that it's pretty one of a kind, honestly, because you do have a highly service um, oriented business, but you also have the right. retail side as well as like the fashion side of it. Um, right. Is an, is a, the only medical device that's also a fashion accessory, right? And so yeah, it's crazy. A lot of aspects to it. Yeah, I've never, I've never actually really thought about it that way. <laughs> there's, um, there's a, that, that's like three different industries in one. Right. Yeah. So that's tough. That's 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 interesting. So uh, tell tell us how Squint started. How did that come about? What did you guys do to get started in in uh, the eyewear industry? So I was originally playing baseball and Tiffany, her first job out of high school was in the optical industry and she worked that all the way through um, our time of being married. And then once baseball started to come to an end, it's like, well, we know two things and it's baseball and eyewear. So um, it, we just thought it'd be a little hard to kind of go double down and try to find a way to earn an income that would provide for our family doing baseball in a small town. And so we went the optical route. So I went, um, did some online training and got certified and was able to do that. And Tiffany kind of got all the, the work on the back end of getting everything set up and ready to go while I was learning. And, and then the next thing you knew, we had a store. Right. Well, and part of that was we were at spring training when COVID happened. Mm. Yeah. And mm. so yeah. when COVID happened, they sent us all home and it was kind of like, okay. <laughs> no one knew what was yeah. going to happen or what that timeline was going to look like. And so we kind of really had to start like, you know, one week turned into two weeks, turned into a month. Then we were like, like, really, what are we going to do? And so we kind of really yeah. had to shift and figure out what our plan B was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, and to start a business during COVID, that's tough. Yeah. That's really hard. That's a really hard thing to do. So. Wow. So, so spring training in what, April, May, April, probably April, that, that started the process of yeah. March. March. Okay. So well, that started the process. Of through. Um, in March. Yeah. But we really kind of didn't make any decisions. We didn't start seriously considering it, I think until July. Yeah. Well, I was still on their roster um, with the rock. I was with the okay. rock at the time and I was still on their roster. They sent us all home. They said, just, we'll keep you posted as we know more as it goes along. And they released a lot of guys who were in the same position as me that were, had been playing for a while that were on like free agent contracts and stuff. But they held on to me all the way until the last day they had to set us, what they ended up doing for COVID was they had to set a 60 man roster that would be with them um, during COVID. And then they would keep some for the major leagues and some held back ready to come up if they needed. And on the day that they had to get that set, they decided that that was when they were going to release me. And so it was at that mm. point where it was like, all right, now we have nothing there. So what are we going to do? Because if they would have yeah. said, hey, 
Um, you're going to be part of our 60 man roster that we're going to carry for this, you know, the COVID season. Cause they did, they ended up playing a major league season, the shortened season. Then I would have obviously right. run out and did that. So mm-hmm. I was still keeping in shape, ready to go to see what happened there. And then once, once we got released, then it was kind of like, all right, now what are we going to do? What are our options? And, and looking through it that way, which was about like, yeah, mid, mid, mid July. July maybe. Yeah. So I think you got released like in June. Yeah, late and June. I just like really struggled with the whole like opening a business aspect. Of it. I'm like, it's just a lot of work. Like, it's such a huge right. commitment, and um, I was so nervous to do it. And he really yeah. like, kind of took the reins and like said, "No, we can do it." And from the time that we decided to open, which was, you want to hear something crazy <laughs> too? This is wild. We bought a building before we even decided to open an optical store. Like, oh, wow. the building literally fell into our laps. Our our realtor called us one day and was like, hey, would you guys be interested in buying a commercial building? And we said, funny story. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, no we, kidding. We bought a building and we're like, well, here we go. Like, we'll do something with it. <laughs> and so. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we bought our building, I think, in July, like the end of July. And then August, we decided we were going to open our own store. And we opened in November. That's cool. So did you know in March that you that was the plan? You guys wanted to look towards some type of business and then it was kind of confirmation whenever you got cut? No, we were still looking to go um, play baseball and, and pursue baseball. For okay. I was actually just really... 2019 was a really hard year for me um, for baseball. And so I we got through that, made it through that, started 2020. I just kind of had like... I kind of got refreshed and I was feeling really good going into spring training i was really excited to just go back out there and i was just happy to be there and happy to get a play and then we get shut down and so we were still holding Mm -hmm. on to going back the problem is and part of what led on to us you know taking those steps and going with it was you're only getting paid while you're playing so as soon as the last game happens in september of 2019 like your paycheck stop and Mm -hmm. so which we set aside for our off season budget. So we, that's the first thing we do is set aside an off season budget to live through the off season. So we had all that set up and prepared. Well, then we get into spring training and there's nothing. And so we're getting into June, July. And so we're still, no paychecks are coming in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. now it's like, well, and I was like, we still wanted to do baseball, but still didn't know. And, and my concern was, I feel like I could get another opportunity if I stayed working out, stayed at it to go into spring training, but who's to say that like halfway through spring training, they're not going to release me. So now we're looking at almost two years of like zero right. income at all. And that was just something I just didn't feel comfortable doing. And we had my wife, we had two boys at the time. And I was like, just the thought of, you know, getting released in next March or next, you know, April, and having to start all over and not be able to find a job in baseball was just too much that I felt like um, we couldn't really afford. So it was, let's, right. let's do a store. And, and what's that. so yeah. funny was that was not like our end in baseball because yeah. he ended up playing that next summer, that next season. He played in right. AAA for a little bit, Yeah. Um, even while we had squints open. So it's kind of funny how like, the path just kind of weaved in and out a little bit for us. And right. we never really shut the door completely on anything where I feel like we're pretty open yeah. um, to when God opens doors and closes doors. And so right. um, it's just interesting. She doesn't know I'm still looking at ways to get back <laughs> into baseball. Always. I know. We still, <laughs> we still do phantom at bats everywhere we go. So <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. It, 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 it would be hard. So, um, a lot of guys, I coach basketball here in Springfield uh, in high school, in a public high school, and there's a lot of guys who want to play at the next level. And so from the time they're five or six years old, they're playing basketball, playing, playing, playing. All school year, all summer they play AAU, then they move into the school year, and it's just they never stop. Their whole life is consumed with with this sport. And then they, they either get a, a scholarship to go play college, which is difficult to do, um, in and of itself, but even if they do that, um, to go pro is just another level. Um, so it's really hard to, uh, to even stop to think about anything else because your whole life has to be about that one thing just to make it to the next level. Um, 
but someday it's over. You know, someday you're you're not going to dribble a ball anymore. Someday you're you're going to have to put down the bat. So, what was that like transitioning from your whole life focusing on one thing to then realizing we we better figure something out? Yeah, it definitely is something. It, and it's it's true because you have to be all in on baseball because I've known people that had like maybe they made it to through college and they made it even like the professional side at the lower levels of the minor leagues, but you're going to get pushed against the wall, like you're back against the wall. And it's like, how much, how all in are you? And when you have another job sitting at home that you can go another career, that's just right there and you can go do it. Not a a lot of people take that job, that opportunity. They don't keep pushing. Mm -hmm. through. So if you're not all in, it's really hard to make it. But that being said, it leaves you in a lot like, kind of like weak in a lot of areas because I got really good at hitting a ball with a stick and running around the bases and catching it and throwing it. But there was a lot of business skills and just personal skills, communication skills that I never learned to develop and just real life skills, work skills that I didn't ever have to develop or grow in because I could do other things really well. So once we entered into the business world I had to like learn a lot really quick and grow up I noticed that I was like really weak in a lot of areas and so I had to learn how to start communicating to people and selling things to people and just being able to you know do normal day-to-day business activities that we always had somebody else take care of so that was a tough transition and the earlier you can develop those skills the better off you're going to be and it's going to help you in, in baseball which as I got to the major leagues there was some really good people that were really good at communicating and talking and just being really professional, like good people. So I started to notice that towards the end of my baseball career, like, Hey, there's a difference between of like what I am now and what I would like to be, because I see these people and I'm like, wow, these are some really good people. And so once I started noticing that I at least had a vision to what I wanted to be like. And then once we got into owning our own businesses like I had to learn all those skills really fast and so yeah so kind of from the other side Tiffany you you were in business all along Mm -hmm. um, just working different jobs in the eye care world whenever you guys realized that that's what you were going to do I'm sure a lot of that rested on you because that's kind of the world that you were in Uh, yeah what was that transition like well I think that's where a lot of my fear kind of stemmed from I've always kind of had like this like entrepreneurial drive where like I've always right. loved the idea of owning and operating my own business. Um, it's just really scary because like I felt like mm-hmm. if it doesn't work, like I felt a lot right. of that pressure because it is something I'm so familiar with. Um, at that point, I had been in the industry for 10 years. As long as he played baseball mm. I, professionally, I had been doing optical. Um, what I think helped me the most is I worked in several different areas. Um, and so I worked in corporate via iMart Express mm. and Lens Crafters. I worked doctor's offices. And then I worked private, um, which is what we do, um, just like a private right. retail store. And so I kind of saw like the good, bad, and the ugly, I think, of all those areas. And I think we kind of landed on it's when you're opening a business and wanting to start a business one, you need to know a lot about your business, <laughs> like a lot, a lot. Right. And so right. I think that's where my 10 years of experience help Two, It's easier to replicate than it is to create. So mm. what I told Kelby, I said, if I'm going to open an optical store, I'm going to give people in liberal Kansas, the lens crafters experience. There's a mm. reason they own the business. Like they are the industry. Right. They're owned by a parent company called Luxotica. And Luxotica owns Lens Crafters, uh, Pearl Visions. Um, they own Oakley. They own mm. Michael Kors. Um, they own all of those brands. Like they are the business in the eyewear industry. And so I said, that's what I want to give the liberal. Um, it's really hard to shop sometimes in a small town. And so. I think people enjoy the experience of being able to walk into like a modern environment. And so that was kind of the other part of that transition was trying to figure out how can I replicate that experience here. 
No, that's a great point. I lived in Goodland, Kansas for a while, and we had to drive an hour and a half just to go to the dentist, <laughs> which is crazy <laughs> to me to think about. But we were down in Syracuse, uh, which isn't far from you guys, just mm-hmm. to uh, just to go to the dentist. So um, to have an experience, a big city experience in a small town, that's right. huge. Well, and um, to, still to get that like small small business feel when you walk in the door. Right. You know, like we know right. people's names and we see them out and about and we'll see them right. at the barbecue restaurant and say hi. And so get still yeah. holding on to that while maintaining the professionalism and the quality and customer service aspect of those bigger corporate stores. Yeah, so it's it's like a perfect mix of both worlds because you got to see the professionalism and the the really the perfecting of the industry, yes. but you grew up in a small town, so you have that, you know, the small town vibe and that right. that um, personality. And and especially if you grow up in that town, you are liberal. You know what I mean? <laughs> you are you are that town. So when they walk in, it's just home. Yeah. So you get this really cool per- perfected corporate feel but it it feels like home at the same time so that's a really good mix like corporate feel all boils down to systems and processes wouldn't you say yes oh man we do like the we try to have a good set of systems and processes on everything we do if there was a mistake it's like all right what kind of where did we fail our system and process or where did we lack implementing a system and process to where like this mistake won't happen again and then trying to like as you said like lens crafters has perfected everything how it goes from start to finish a job from the moment somebody walks into the door until they get their glasses and a year after they get their glasses what that whole process the like, whole thing they have it all yes. gone through with hours and hours of thinking and perfection with really good systems and processes so so to get that professional somebody comes in and they can see that all right this is how everything goes and they can feel like that professionalism that system and processes in place like this is what to expect. Okay. You're going to get a text message in a week to 10 days to let you know your glasses are ready. And we emailed you your receipt. Everything is good to go. Yep. If you have any questions in the meantime, give us a call and they can, they can see uh, that. that's like a system and process we put in so they can feel that. But then at the same time, we're still, we know their name. We know the kids, we know their work. We know who right. they are. Um, so it is that, that blend of, of both aspects, which is really cool. It is cool. And si- honestly, I'm glad you guys brought that up because systems and processes are so important for businesses. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of small businesses think about that. Right. Um, if your system, if your systems are all on a steno notepad, you're mm-hmm. probably going to be in trouble. You know what I mean? If that's how you, if that's how you run your business, you, well, it's only going to be as big as you can be. Yeah. And um, or as big as that notepad could be. <laughs> right. And I think that that's another important aspect is if if our employees can't implement a system and process, if a system and process only goes as far as Kelby and I, it's a terrible right. system and process. Right. Right. And so right. I'm constantly asking my employees, like, does this system and process work for you? Because if it doesn't work for you, it does not work for me. Like right. my job is to allow you guys and to empower you guys to do your job and be very good at it. And so if we're missing the mark somewhere, something needs to change. And I think being flexible and constantly being fluid, like especially yeah. in small business, anything could happen. Um, and right. so a system and process that worked two weeks ago might not necessarily work at another season in your business. And so being willing to change and adapt to those things, I think is super important. Yeah. And I think what I was thinking when we were talking about all this, the, what a good structured defined system and process does when you get new employees and you're bringing them through it, it just makes the learning process. Everybody's does the same thing. It's all on the same page. They can learn yeah. it. Better. It's not like, Oh, well, sometimes you can do it this way or this way. And it's just kind of like, however you feel, you can say, this is how we're going to do this. And it makes learning. Yep and getting caught up to speed on giving the customer a good Mm -hmm. experience instead of always, you know, every time they come in, we want the same experience no matter who they're working with. Right. And part of that, like when I say we have systems and processes for everything, (laughs) like literally from the time a customer walks in the door, we have a system and process for how our employees meet that customer, what they do after their greeting, um, how they Mm -hmm. explain lenses, how they communicate on the phone 
how they handle someone that comes back and maybe they can't see well. Like we have systems processes for every single step. Yeah. I feel like that happens. Yeah. Maybe a little overboard, but yeah. And I mean, it's and it's fluid. no. It, there yeah. is some fluidity in there, so yes. like you can kind of read right. the customer, and it's like, all right, just like give them a little space. They don't want you asking them thirty right. questions. Right. <laughs> read the room. But it's like, read the room. yeah, read them. We're gonna say, ask everyone who comes in. You're gonna ask how they're doing, how their day's going. And then you're going to ask right. them, well, what can I help you with? So then you, they know exactly. So then you know exactly what they're looking for from you. Because if you just kind yeah. of come in, you don't, and you never ask that question specifically. I mean, we, I mean, pretty much always word it that way. What can I do for you? And it right. gets them to tell you exactly what they're wanting from you. So if you know what they want from you, then you can better help them. And I mean, it maybe is, we're pretty structured on it. But I think a good example that maybe people could relate to is like Chick Fil A. Like they have, you can oh, yeah. sense their system of processes. When when somebody says thank you, mm -hmm. they, they might pleasure. You know, right? I mean, we're probably not that hardcore. Well, on it, but I think it's... too when we were opening, <laughs> that's one of the businesses we looked at. We said, "What oh, yeah. is about Chick Fil A that makes it such a great experience?" Like every single time, you know, mm -hmm. and trying to implement those types of things in our businesses and being able to look at other places. We're like, that's a great experience. Like, how can we do that yeah. as students, you know? Like what that. I'm seeing from you guys is something that I think is so important for people who are wanting to expand. If you want to be a solopreneur and you want to go do it yourself, you can make a lot of money and that's fine. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to grow at all, um, and I see you guys doing this very clearly, don't be, don't be insecure. You don't know the best way to do everything. Yes. You don't know. Exactly. You don't know how how you're supposed to respond and and to every situation. Right. So you guys are looking outward. You're also looking inward. You said if it works for you and Kelby, that's one thing. But it's got to work for them too. Right. Um. So many small business owners say no. It has to be my way, and they kind of lock it in. And if you have that attitude, you're just not going to grow. It's, right. it's not going to happen. You're not going to, yeah. you're not going to have good customer service like you want. Exactly. Because then I think what happens is your employees get very frustrated That's what, for and sure. then your employees get insecure and I want my yeah. employees to be as absolutely confident as they possibly mm -hmm. can. Be. And on the same time, while we're trying to provide, I mean, at least from mine and Tiffany's perspective, while we're trying to provide our customers with a great experience in shopping every time they do, we want to also provide that same experience to our employees. Like Absolutely. we want a great working experience. Like I want my employees right. to want to work. Like if they don't want to work, like I'd rather you just call in sick. And if you don't want to be here, don't be here. Like I, like we'll figure this right. out. Like I want you to want to be in the store. And if you want to be in the store, right. then you can better care of the, the customers. And so we have to look on our side as like, well, what do they want? What do our customers want? What do they, or not our customers, what do our employees want? And what would make this an enjoyable experience for them as well? So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's something that might get overlooked is, also creating an experience for your employees that they also enjoy. You know? Yeah. Well, let's get down to some like details specifically with the retail side. Do you guys carry brands, different branded uh -huh. uh, glasses? Yes. So what um, was that process like in trying to get those brands in your store? Well, one, because we live in such a small town and I have been in the industry for 10 years, I already had connections with a lot of the reps. Mm. So all I had to do was call the company and then right. um, once the rep gave me a call back, I'd say, hey, this is Tiffany and they know who I was. That helps. Um, so right. that does help. But I was telling Kelby on the way here, I was like, you just got to call, like pick up right. the phone, Google something, pick up the phone, call the number. And if it's not the right number, say, could you give me another phone number to try and try that phone number? Mm. The whole reason. Right that Swince even exists is because I made one phone call about a POS system. Um, mm. I had never worked in a private office that had a POS system. So I was like, if I open one, I just want to see like what we're looking at here. Um, right. So I called our POS system and he said, well, if you're looking for fixtures, which I wasn't even like, we weren't even there yet. He was like, I got right. it. And it was, the guy that he connected me with um, had started all of the Walmart opticals. He and so oh, wow. He came up with the concept the of, putting, concept of opticals, putting opticals inside Walmarts. And then he's the one that pitched it to Walmart and then started that whole program. So it was really cool. And so, so wow. what happened was he was also doing the same thing in like Walgreens and CVSs. Well, then COVID hit 
And he had all of these fixtures and frames ready to go in these stores, just sitting in storage. And so oh, we got our entire store furnished. Um, That's from amazing. <laughs> It was like, wow, it was unbelievable. Like, yeah, I mean, we got so many thousands worth of dollars of fixtures for like half of price. Yeah, um, like top of the line fixtures. And then he also connected us to to um, a lab um, expert who also connected us with our lab where we get all of our lenses. And so that kind wow. of happened. She's also a marketing expert. So she helped us with all of our like getting our store set up as far as like graphics, displays, um, what we need on what fixture, kind of getting us in the moving in the right direction, um, cleaners, um, all of our logo work, our lens mats, all of that. Wow. And so one phone call. So, yeah. so like, don't be afraid to pick so up. So just a couple of connections. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Just ask. About something, <laughs> call and ask. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah. I mean, the worst they can say is no. I mean, exactly. You know, so you, then you call somebody else. Yeah. I got a lot right. of that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, do you know anybody that does that yeah. can help me with that? <laughs> We're mm. pretty persistent. <laughs> so it's like, oh yeah, I know this one guy. You might be able to call him. And then you call yeah. Him. So. Yeah. So do you guys do anything with marketing in liberal? Um, yeah. What kind of marketing do you do? Um, we, well, we do a ton of social media stuff, like a ton okay. I think so. If you own a business and you're not on social media, like, what right. are you doing? Like, you have right. to on social media. Um, Who does that for you? Um, we actually have um, a friend of mine that does a lot of that. I did a, most of it in the beginning. And I, when we say social media, like, you should be posting every single day on multiple platforms. And so right. um, we're posting at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. Um, depending mm. on what it is, talking about um, our specials. We do free lenses for kids 10 and under. We do buy one, get one half all prescription eyewear, 25% off non-prescription eyewear if you buy two pairs. Um, we do, what's something else? We file insurance. We post about that a lot. We do free adjustments and repairs every day. Somebody's glass. That's why we were a little late today because guy came in, <laughs> broken glass. His glasses broke at Arby's while he was eating lunch. And nice. you're approved for them. And it always blows people's mind when we take time to fix their glasses and they say, oh, what do I owe you? And we say, absolutely nothing. We're happy to do it. Free adjustments and repairs every day. And they're like, That's what? Awesome. You know, because I think yeah. sometimes what businesses miss out on too is the opportunity to do things for free. Right. Because when you can, you should. Um, yeah. Inevitably, it will always help you in the long run. And yeah. you shouldn't ever lose money. But you can give a little and your customers will give you a lot in return is what we've yeah. defined out. So we market that a lot. Yeah. Do you guys work with insurance? We do. I feel like that would be a nightmare. Is that as scary it as it sounds? <laughs> <laughs> I can't um, even imagine. It's a nightmare. We um, got one person in our office that can do that and that's her. Yeah. And so it's that. Okay. Trip. So. I don't have a system. Yeah. Process. I have my own system <laughs> process for that. I haven't found a good yes. one for anybody else. So it's yes. you need to of, write that down and give it away. It's <laughs> my area right now. Nobody else. That's is so funny. Over, so um, I can't even imagine. Yeah, it can be. What helps is we're in a small town, so I don't have to right. take every single person's insurance. I know the big ones. Mm. And right. like our beef packing plant, the hospital. That's another thing. Our hospital, City of Liberal. City of Liberal um, so we are credentialed with um, Blue Cross Blue Shield as well as um, I think Trust that's the beef packing plan. Trust Mark, it's a reimbursement plan though, so you don't Vision have to be. Right. So yeah, there's a couple of those that like, hmm. are, it's just, there's a lot of intri intricacies in insurance. I wouldn't even know right. where to start, to yes. be completely honest. Let's talk about the hospital. It's kind well, of, so another good marketing opportunity that we have is our hospital does these vendor fairs twice a year mm. where... They invited us to this two years ago, I think, um, where we go to the hospital. We actually close our store down for the day, take a ton of frames um, and all of our stuff up to the hospital and sell glasses at the hospital all day. And oh, we wow. their insurance, they let the they let the employees do payroll deduct. And then in turn, we donate like 10 percent of our sales to the hospital. And that's oh, what we buy like all their nice. Christmas gifts and things. Oh, and that's cool. So we do that twice a year. And that's a huge event for us. 
And so we do a lot of that. We're doing a community health fair this year. Yeah. So we always look for things. Um, our biggest employer um, business, I guess, you or however you would say it, would be National Beef, a beef packing plant. So we've gone out there and just set up at their lunch area, mm-hmm. just adjusted people's glasses, fixed people's glasses, passed out flyers. To the schools, it's a little bit harder, but we usually pass out little back to, um, school. Back to school like flyers or coupons and drop them off the offices, nice. tell them, pass them out to all the teachers. Uh, we just went to the college um, and did, what was that fair called? Uh, the student orientation. Student orientation fair, went out there and set up. So we're always looking at, especially those are great because they're free ways to get out and get in the community. You get to meet people. I remember I just had a lady in the other day who said that she remembers seeing me come out to National Beef. And so you get out, get to meet new people, more people get to see you, and it's completely free. You're not having to pay. Yeah. Granted, it takes up some of your time, but you're actually getting to meet people rather than just putting a, mm-hmm. a, a logo on a billboard right. or whatever. Um, you can start to right. know people's faces and they can remember you. So it's a cool way to do that right. um, with that aspect of it, of getting involved in what's, <laughs> yeah. where there's a lot of people and trying to get involved. That's cool. Well, let's take a break for just a second. I want to introduce our sponsor and we'll uh, talk about them for just one second. Cool. Papa Bun Roastery, uh, you know them by now if you've listened to any of our episodes. Uh, make sure you go check them out on Facebook at Coffa Bun Roastery or CoffaBunRoastery.com. You're definitely going to want to order your coffee from them. If you're a coffee drinker, then at least check them out. I'm, I got their logo up in the corner on YouTube. Um, they do have a promo code with us. I want to scroll that as, as well across YouTube. The promo code is Biz, B-I-Z-A-2, the number 2, E-Z, Biz, A to E-Z. That's going to give you free shipping on any orders over $30. They have subscriptions that you can get. The coffee's just going to show up uh, every other month, and uh, and you can get a lot of different flavors. They also have the uh, versions of the K cups, and so you can get those, and they'll fit in any of your machines that take those. Uh, they also have um, the the coffee chocolate covered coffee, uh, coffee beans, different things like that. So make sure you're checking them out if you're a coffee drinker at all. Please, please, please go to Coffee Bun Roastery and order from them, and I promise you will not regret it. Again, free shipping on any orders over $30. The promo code is BIZA2EZ. Check them out and uh, and order some coffee from them. They're awesome people. Uh, do you guys know the Spivies? Yes. Have you? Uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> obviously they're at, they're at school. Um, do you guys, are you all coffee drinkers? I am a little bit. I'm not really. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not, I'm not either. And that's the crazy part. You know, I'm hosting this show and <laughs> we got a coffee, coffee sponsor and I don't really drink it, but, uh, I came across white coffee. I don't know if you ever heard of that out uh-huh. West. And, um, it's when they brew the coffee beans green and uh-huh. it's just not bitter at all. It's kind of uh-huh. nutty. So I like that. Yeah. It's a lot different, but I need to get coffee bun to, uh, to do white coffee. So yeah. we'll have to figure that out. Interesting. But yeah, they're, they're really cool. They do, they do great stuff. And, uh, everybody who likes coffee that I've, uh, run into that's tried it, they love it. So cool. if, uh, if you guys know anybody, we'll, we'll send oh, some coffee I, out there. We know a so. lot of coffee drinkers. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to not know somebody who drinks it, but exactly. it's pretty crazy. So, um, we've talked about kind of the retail side of it. Um, if you were talking to somebody who wanted to start a business, what would you say to them? Um, in from the from the aspect of owning your own business and working for yourself, it really is like I think you, to give you have to or to get you have to give. So you can't mm. you can't have it all um, in one sense, but you do have it all in another sense. You get to make your own schedule. We bring our kids with us to work. Um, which was really important for us because we were apart all the time during baseball. And so we really wanted right. to post baseball to where we could ha- be together a lot, especially with our kids. And so um, that was really important to us. Um, but it is also, um, I don't want to like be negative and say high stress, but there is 
some aspects where, I mean, you do have a lot of ownership over things, literally. Right. And so yeah. um, the toll yeah. that, that can take sometimes um, can be hard to manage. So I would say maybe put in place some strategies. Um, so something we have put in place is um, our employees don't call us after five o'clock. Um, mm. There's nothing I can do after five o'clock. My lab's closed. Insurance companies are closed. Everything's closed. Right. Um, our, and they're not even really, I don't like them texting me either after five o'clock. And so um, I think putting strategies in place like that, um, it's still a work in progress. Sometimes they still text me and I say, please send me a message on iCloud, which is our POS. Right. And then they can message me. Right. And I can get it when I go into work the next day. Um, they can email me. I don't care. Just don't text me or call me after five o'clock. Right. <laughs> yeah. For me, well, that. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that's important too, because if you don't get to a text because you're feeding your kids or doing something with your kids, you might not ever get back to that. So that could exactly. slip through the cracks exactly. and you just can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> cause it, small business, you can't because do it. I'm answering the phone too much. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? Go well, you know what? Sometimes it does bring up as hard as it is to like set that boundary. It helps me go back to my employees and say, okay, what was this? What was it about this situation that you didn't right. feel capable of handling and what system and process can we put right. to help mitigate that? That's where your systems right. and processes. And it's, there's always new systems and processes we need. Right. Um, I have about three that I need to come up with on my list right now. So it must <laughs> take time, you know, you just kind of have to think it through and say, okay, what can I do to alleviate this? Uh, because if they don't feel comfortable doing their job when I'm not there, that does not work for me. So. Right, right. Have you guys been able to step away from the business and just trust that the stuff you've put in place they're going to be able to function without you being there. We're getting to that point. We're getting there. Yeah. Like we're like super yeah. close, yeah. super, super close. That's, that's a hard transition. Very. We are middle son just got his tonsils removed. So we were gone, completely gone for Monday and Tuesday and, and most of Wednesday. And most of Wednesday. Yeah. Pretty much all of Wednesday too. Yeah. So we were gone three days and it went, the building was still together and wasn't burned down. So <laughs> I told good. our lab tech, I said, don't burn down the building. Don't sink the ship. <laughs> please, so it, please. We're definitely getting to that point. Yes. I remember that was one of the biggest stresses at the beginning was just like, we're never going to be able to leave. We're never going to be able to get out. Of right. Here. And yeah. it's like, I think you just now going through it, we kind of have a better understanding. I think even we kind of knew like, Hey, this could be like a, we're going to have to like put in a lot of time, mm -hmm. but until you've been through it and know it now, it's like, now we kind of understand it a little bit better. And we're getting to the point to where our employees have been there long enough to be able to, they've seen enough situations and enough things that have come up to where they can handle pretty much everything that right. is going on. So yeah. really the calls and text messages have got mitigated or gotten. I, think, a lot I feel like work. it is a lot better. And like I said, it's only after five, like, it's before five o'clock. Right. Only ask me. I'll give you that time. Yeah. Um, right. After, of course. But after that, like that's my boundary. And so I think that as right. a business owner, it's important for you to set those. And I probably didn't set that soon enough yeah. in our business. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot harder to implement later. Um, right. For sure. But we are getting so close to being able. I. I mean, I think we're. Yeah, for sure. We're like ninety-five percent there. Yeah. Well, we're well, both here, and, we're both here and not at the store. So. So, and I, don't, I didn't even hey. I felt good. So <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So being in a small town, um, you guys have products that you can sell. Um, for me, all my work's local because we clean windows. So it's not like we're, we have a product that we're selling. You guys have products that you're selling. Um, the internet obviously is going to be a, a huge help to your business or a business like yours. Do you guys have any plans for the future of, um, let me ask two questions here. Number one, do you have any plans of the future of how you can get out of liberal expand maybe with another location or using the internet to sell or anything like that? And then number two, do you guys have any plans on, uh, maybe you don't want to share it, but on maybe manufacturing your own brand of lenses or your own brand of frames and kind of getting, kind of getting into that world. What's the future look like for squints? So, I mean, we're entrepreneurs, so yes, yes, and yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Sky's the limit. I'll do yeah. all the things. Sure. Yeah. 
we, we, I mean, me, like naturally, like I'm going to look towards growth and expanding in whatever way. So one of the things we did was kind of analyze, all right, what are ways we can grow? One would be another location. So we've looked at the, like kind of got an idea, right, what's that, what would that look like? And then it's like, all right, what right. about online? which presents its benefits as well as challenges, especially in the eyewear industry, more so than just like if you're selling books, you know? Right. Then you have, um, one of the other ways would be to get an eye doctor. We don't carry an eye doctor on site. So we just, if people have their prescriptions, then we do that. So that was, those were kind of like the three ways we could we look at We looked into growth. doing our own frame line. And then I did look at doing our own frame line that kind of can maybe help on some of your margins and, and stuff like that. I mean, I did, I mean, I was messaging people in China, so. Yeah, like we uh, really Yeah, that's cool. That yeah. If I find something, I'm not opposed to doing it, but yeah. I'm super picky. Right. Like yeah. I'm not just right. gonna throw sub par product with my name on it right. out there. And that know? was right. kind of what um, I was gonna say about starting a business, I think. I kind of have like more so me than Tiffany have kind of put in a little bit of time to just kind of see what that looks like. Like we started working on a website mm -hmm. and I just did it all on my own. I was just messing around, trying to figure it all out. And I was kind of like, all right, well, that's what that's going to be like. We looked, you know, I was messaging people in China about frames. Like, what's that going to look like? And then it's like, well, right. There's two sides of it because you can talk yourself out of doing anything, mm -hmm. you know, cause you get scared, right. you get the fear. And so sure. there's that aspect where it's like, well, that would have been good, but we just never did it because we were too scared or we were too afraid. But then there's also right. the other side. It's like, hey, this is going to be a lot more hours and a lot more manpower than we're ever going to see the return of. So maybe it's like, all right, we kind of right. like what that was going to look like. Let's pivot to something else. What we figured, what I figured anyways, was website was one of the best ways to get the ex look at expanding with minimizing like hours, upfront cost and all of that. So we... So I pushed pretty hard into that, and then I kind of hit a wall. I got busy with a lot of other stuff. I coached in the summer, uh, baseball. So we got really busy. Kind of hit a wall to where I was like kind of stuck, where I couldn't go much further with my skill set. And then we got our POS system that that guy we were talking about earlier. They just got integrated with a website, um, like a website company. Yeah, a website company where they integrate the two. So all your inventory is automatically uploaded when you sell or whatever. It, it it's oh, all wow. done. It's and all integrated. Well, and that's part of the hard part of retail is ma inventory management. Right, and right, right. Making things consistent in your store and online. And we mm -hmm. that's where we kind of got stuck. That was the wall I hit. That was the wall we hit was inventory. Yeah, inventory like, control. Yeah, that's crazy. The power to like manage all of that ourselves was yeah. just basically right. impossible. Yeah. And then right. without getting a whole team just yeah. to be dedicated to that. Well, now they have it all set up to where it links straight to it. So anytime we get a new frame and put it in on our POS system, it automatically puts it on the website. They get all the pictures. They do all the things, all the descriptions, all the That's prices. Awesome. automatically links over. When because, we sell a frame, it pulls yeah. it out. Well, and when we're talking about like frames, you're talking one frame may have multiple colors, multiple sizes, and you have like all of that information that has to be put right. in for that one frame. And when you have over a thousand frames in your store, like yeah that's, that's a, a nightmare <laughs> that's so, a huge yeah. wall. but so now that we got that figured out we've started re-kicking it up we're probably a week or so away from it being actually usable mm -hmm. all the way through um we might have some call some of our friends and have them be some test customers <laughs> but that was one of the easiest ways that we felt like we could expand without having to dedicate too much money or too much time mm -hmm. right so. Well, that's awesome. So I'm going to pop it up on the sc on the screen there. It's called Squints. I've got their phone number on the screen on YouTube as well. And then uh, the website there is squintslk.com, S-Q-U-I-N-T-S-L-K.com for those listening on Apple Podcast. Um, like it, like I said, it's not, not quite ready yet, but um, we'll be here soon. And so if somebody wants to buy glasses over in North Carolina or whatever, they can go on your website and they can, they can order glasses through you guys. Yeah. So not only will That's we awesome. get to do at home try-ons, um, they can pick multiple frame styles. We ship them. You take a selfie with the frame. It gives us all the measurements. You put in your prescription, done deal. We make them, you have glasses into your door wow. at your door, hopefully within two weeks. Um, but we cool. can also do virtual try-ons. If you don't want to wait for frames to ship, you can do a virtual try-on with a lot of our frames that we have in store. So. so that's like big time stuff. 
yes. virtual try on is yes. that's that's uh that's yeah. like baller move right there. <laughs> I think that's what's unique to our website as opposed to like a Warby Parker or things like that is that we get accurate measurements, which is a mm. crucial part. Yeah. So in glasses, right. you the center of the lens over the center of your eye. And if that's off by a little bit, then it's going to affect your vision, can create headaches. It's going to, you know, it's just not enjoyable to not be looking through. And the stronger the prescription is, the more important mm-hmm. that is. And so that's right. been a lot of challenges. which we've done a lot of out of state and out of town customers just through like phone calls yeah. or friends or whatever. And we kind of, I kind of developed my own system to, to get measurements, but that's one of the, the biggest challenges. And so that's already integrated into our website that they can do that is really cool. And, and right. Helps. So that's what I was going to tell them even before our website, like we've been doing virtual consults um, mm-hmm. for a while now, and we're able to get really accurate measurements with how, with his little system that he created just by himself. So um, it's been that's there, awesome. but now we have an actual, it'll be a lot more user-friendly and easy for people. Yeah. Do that. Well, that's so, great because sorry. Every time we go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, you go. You, you, you. Yeah, this time, kind of go, ahead. go back to like what you were saying to somebody that was starting a business. One of my things when I was looking at it is, and I kind of mentioned this a little bit, is spend the time on the upfront mm-hmm. to make mm-hmm. sure that this is something that's going to work. Because you would rather right. spend two or three months or like a lot of hours researching. Like we, we had numbers on like, all right, what is, what are we expected our numbers? What, what is this going to look like if we open this? Like, here's what's worst case scenario. Here's what's best case scenario. Like, what is this going to look like? And figure out if it's even an option, because if you're going to start a store selling, you know, water balloons, like that's probably not going to work out well for you, you know? So I think that time in at the upfront can save you two years of trying something that that's never going to work. And so it's better to spend right. two months than two years on a bad idea, you know, and that's, that's part of what the planning is. Yeah. You're living it out and trying to like figure out what it's going to be. And it's like, well, I spent two months on a bad idea rather than two years. And so you can save right. yourself there. And then also, I, I mean, one of the big things was looking at a business that I like. what I liked about the optical side was we're not going to be competing against Walmart and Amazon. Because there's so many of those little like intricate things is like, all right, well, if we get the frames, like there's the measurements, there's the lenses, you have to get, you have to have a lab where you're going to get your lenses from. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to cut the lenses to get them to fit into the frame. You have to make sure that those are centered and all of that to where it's a space that, you know, I don't see anytime soon that like a Walmart or an Amazon's going to be like our main competitor, which is great and bad because then it makes a lot more work on our side to do the online. We can't just pop up a book and sell it you know there's there's a lot of work but the fact that we have those capabilities and we're able to do that work Mm -hmm. allows us you know the opportunity to reach new business and not be having to trying to compete against you know amazon or target and and it's something that's going to be around like people are still going to be wearing glasses in 30 years even if you think of all like the technology advances as far as like what they can do to eye surgeries and those types of things there's still the fashion aspect and the the practical aspect that um, glasses are still going to be used and they're always going to be relevant right they're always going to be right. relevant and then you have the insurance aspect so people are going to get new glasses because their insurance is uh, is available so there's always going to be that turnover and those customers that are going right. to need to purchase your product and you're solving a problem that's the biggest thing about a business is like if you're not solving any problems for anybody you're not a business and you're not going to be in business right and if people can't see, that's a big problem. And so we're, we're here to help provide that solve, solve that problem for them. And, you know, while we're doing that, we're going to try to do it the best possible way at the best possible price that we can and give them the best possible experience. And I think you do that, then that is maybe some thoughts for anybody looking at starting a business. Oh. Yeah, it's going to go a long way. That's for sure. Um, what we're coming up on some time here. So, uh, just, I'll ask another question. One more question, I guess. Um, this is a podcast. We talk about, um, business in churches or with people who are involved in their church. I know you all are very involved in your church. Do you have anything that you'd like to say about how you balance church life with, um, with business life? Um, whether that be hiring or just, 
um, the way that you serve your community mm -hmm. through your business and your church? What does that look like for you guys? I think one of the biggest, well, one, all of our employees go to church with us, <laughs> um, <laughs> That's awesome. which is great, but really we've approached them. Um, we don't right. really like take many. Yeah. I'm, I always said when I was like, if I'm starting my business, I want to pick the people that I have in my store. I don't want to like yeah. just submit and like have people submit resumes. It's like, I, and right. not that I'm only going to get people in our church because right. there's a few people in our community that I would say I would Absolutely. love for them to work at Squints. For and sure. They don't go to our church. Right. But like, that's how I want to get people. It's like, yes. I want to select them because I know who they are and their reputation and their character. Yes. Um, it just so happens that all of our employees also go to our church. <laughs> yeah. So there is um, that. Yeah. There is that connection. I think for us, um, one church is number one. And so we are right. not afraid to close our store if we need to, should something else come up. And, you know, I always try to tell my employees, um, work is not your life. What you do outside of work is your life. And so mm -hmm. I try to foster as much um, flexibility there as possible. And so um, knowing that if they have something come up, um, whether it's church related or not, and we're talking about church, but um, they automatically get like, yes, go do what you need to do. Like not a big deal at right. all. And I think too, one of our biggest desires is should just be a light in our community. Um, we play Christian music in our store only and people comment on it all the time. And um, we've had the opportunity to pray with several people when they're in our store. And I think um, more than owning a business, like God has called us to be a light and mm -hmm. to share the love of Jesus with people, even if that's just replacing a nose pad or um, right. giving them a free cleaner or something like that, you know, and um, going beyond doing things just for the gain, um, but doing things because that's what we're called to do. Yeah. And I think right. what one of the reasons what we ended up ultimately landing on opening squints was we wanted to be really involved in our parenting, but also we want to be really involved in our church. Mm -hmm. And so mm. we wanted to be able to, if things were going on towards like, Oh, I can't, I'm stuck at work. You know, we wanted that flexibility. Right. Like, well, we can just close the whole store or we can get somebody else in there and we can go do what, yeah. because we own the place. We don't have to like put in a, you know, give enough of a warning that, Hey, I need these days off. It's, we can be flexible. So that was one of the biggest things. I think as far as like relationships with people in our church and our businesses, because obviously a lot of our customers are from our church and it's like, just right. If you, if you're doing business, right. Like there shouldn't be any conflict there. Right. It's like, if I'm trying to, you know, make a quick buck or do something dishonest, then you're going to have issues. Mm -hmm. And that might just happen to be with somebody that you also happen to go to church with. But when you try right. to do everything in your business ethically and right, all that's going to do is deepen your relationships and your connections with your church members. Cause it's like, you see them in church, it's like, Hey, how your glasses doing? I, I know that was, that was kind of bothering you. Is that better now? Is there anything we can do? Oh, just right. stop. And we, we can take care of you. Yeah. And so it's like, it almost kind of helps that connection. I've gotten to know a lot of people in our yeah. church a little bit better because I've got to help them at the store. And I think yeah. whenever you, run it that way then there's never like oh man this person's angry at me because yeah. of this it's like or even when there is a misunderstanding which, which happens which does happen sometimes when you're doing business right. the most important thing is that your relationship with a brother and sister in christ is more mm. important than business always um right that's what christ has called us to um he's called us right. to buyers and so um, I think it's really important to do what needs to be done, even if that means um, you could maybe not benefit from that sale or make the most right. profit from that sale that you would. But if it's going to maintain and unify your relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ, that's what needs to be done. Yeah, and that I, would, right. I know we're running on time, but that led me to another thought. Now we're gonna go blank on it. <laughs> I got, got distracted to thinking on it. Um, what'd you say? I was saying we need to be unifiers. Yeah, I know. Um, I went blank. Well, for me, it's just, that's all right. But like what, thinking about it, there's times where I know I can control my attitude. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, not to be arrogant or prideful or anything like that, but it's like, I know that I can let this go 
so yeah. I'll take the loss. You know, right. I'm not going to let this beef become a thing. So yeah. you know what? You were right. I was wrong. So I think as long as you have the lowest seat mindset or the servant mm -hmm. mindset, sure, which you, you have to have in business uh, and especially a service business. Um, but as a Christian, as long as you have that attitude, it's like, you know what? Uh, here's a gift card on your way out, you know, and right. just yeah. just go on the, the extra mile to make sure that um, that if there is a loss that's going to be taken and it's going to be me and then I'm not going to harbor that bitterness. So we're good. You know, um, sure. I've had to run. I've, I've run into that already. And there's been times where it's like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to run a meal over to you just to sh let you know there's no bad blood. And right. mm -hmm. I'm not going to let this affect me as a business owner. So it's it's just all part of it because people are people, you know, yeah. and it's uh, gonna they're going to be people. people. The other day, <laughs> we're going to people. So let the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> that's awesome that's uh, awesome i know i know we're running well short, i feel like but I, the one thing no if you got something let's do yeah. it so let's, <laughs> you know i not too old yet um one of the yeah. things I, I i didn't take me too long to be into business before i realized and i told tiffany this because this did kind of surprise me coming from like the baseball world into the business world is it's not so much that problems aren't going to happen and it's like or like even trying to create the best systems and processes problems are still mm -hmm. always going to come up and you can't ever get to the point where you're preventing every single possible problem that can happen. But what right. I've learned is if you can be the person who can come to a good solution on every mm -hmm. type of problem, how you handle the problems when they come up makes all the difference. So it's like, I don't care what problem comes up because I know I can handle that problem. That's going to make them happy. That's going to make me happy and we're going to be able to do it. So I think it was just learning that fact that, it's not about avoiding problems. It's about handling problems mm -hmm. and having that right. mindset is Well, is and we, one more thing, sorry. <laughs> we also have one more thing. I'm um, not in a hurry at all. So you guys go as long as you want. In retail, if anybody is in retail, that if um, nine out of 10 people have a problem, the problem is you. And if one out of 10 mm. people have a problem, that's retail. Right. So, <laughs> that's a I'll great say, statement. I mean, there's always going to be one person who you just can't make happy. Like right. you can't sleep over the one person. But if you have nine out of 10 people who aren't happy, you need to take a look inward and say, well, what right. is going on? You know, so. Something's wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a great point. That's awesome. So um, have you, so you played professionally, uh, played baseball professionally for years. Have you been able to, um, I don't know if leverage is the right word, but leverage any um, uh, relationships that you've had to kind of help your business or is that something maybe in the future that you'd try to do? You know, I, just my personality is not, you know, kind of, he's not super extroverted. Yeah. So to like, right. go and try to like use that as like leverage hasn't really been my thing. Um, I, right. I really wouldn't be able to build a business without even having to use that because then that means you've gotten good at building businesses, but it's kind of like, exactly. But then there's still that opportunity that maybe perhaps we're missing, but you know, I try not to use that as leverage. There has been, remember we made some for uh, Sergio Romo. So yeah, we did. There has been a couple players that I had that, or that I played with that have reached out and we've made them glasses. Um, I think right. maybe some more of that might come in once we get the website up and we can right. share that. So any of our, like former teammates or their wives or whatever follow our social media and there's now a website right. on they might we might be able to reach some more of our you know friends and teammates yeah. from the past and from baseball but i haven't ever like purposely like intermingled the two of those right Right. So Buster Posey's not on the background of your website with glasses <laughs> on or something like that, you know. So we do have we do have a uh, like little pictures throughout a store just like displaying glasses or whatever. I was like, how funny would it be if we got like pictures of like major league baseball players, but like they're in their street clothes. Like yeah. people I played with yeah. and we close and put those up and nobody like knew who it and was. yeah, nobody knows. That's so funny. Perfect, we never got that done, so that was funny. Though. Yeah. It's it well, it's one of those things where it's like you know, congratulations on making it. I mean, cause that the amount of work that it takes to, to do that is insane. But like you said, you want to make sure that you're doing business the right way. So you don't want to use those connections or anything like that per se, but at the same time you did it. So yeah. I, I don't think that there is anything wrong with, 
you yeah, know, trying a, to. We have a couple jerseys in the store <laughs> yeah. and a picture. Yeah. And You're a right. <laughs> it is. It it's is a good a, conversation starter. It's like what you're saying. It is for a sure. balance between you don't want to like overuse it and manipulate it. But at the same time, it's still something that is a part of who we are and right. to implement it. And it's a tough balance. I err definitely more on the side of using it less, just my personality. Right. But it's not right. zero to use it, I guess. Well, I remember my grandpa always bought his cars from a guy who played for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You mm-hmm. know, he sold cars now after he after he was done in the NBA. And so he was like 6'8", and my grandpa always went in there and was like, hey, we're buddies, you know. And, of course, this guy's <laughs> like, yeah, I'll be your buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Buy cars from me or whatever. Absolutely. But it was uh, – it was always cool to to be able to say, "Hey, I met a guy who was who was a professional player." So that, that it's it is kind of a balance. You wanna you wanna be careful with it, but but yeah. that's cool. So sure. that's awesome. All right. Well, uh, anything else you guys want to say before uh, before we shut it down? I uh, here's it. I always try to get. I always try to give an opportunity. Just uh, one last one last shot at promotion or something that you guys uh, that you can get out there with. Uh, with uh, your business, I'll throw the website on the on the yeah. YouTube page one more time. Um, when will that be up and ready? You said a couple weeks. Yeah, we're 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 getting pretty close. We got a couple people helping us work on it, and then we're I'm gonna go back straight from here and go back to work and kind of try to do some work on it too. That's what I was doing today. Uh, we had a whole meeting to go over it today with the the company that's helping us put it together. So. There's just the fine little touches left that we we got to put together, and then it'll be ready. So yeah, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. You need glasses. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. If you need glasses or want to check out their inventory, yeah. what they have to offer, um, try out some uh, Tomlinson specials or something <laughs> like that. Well, uh, some kind of awesome custom squints glasses. That'd be cool. Uh, maybe yeah, down the road in a couple of years, we'll see. Just don't even know where to start, right? So sometimes yeah. people have no idea what kind of glasses they want. So also feel free to email us, call us anytime. Yeah. We will literally like we. That's one of the funnest parts of the job. So people call us and they say, you know, I think I kind of want this. I'll look at their Facebook page. I'll see like kind of what their style is, what they look like, and I'll pick like four or five frames that I think would look great and send them your way. That's cool. And if you like them, great. Yeah, that's a big help. We'll try again. You know. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So if you need glasses or are interested in glasses, go to squintslk.com or you can call their uh, their local location. That's uh, 620-604-9895. They'll be able to help you out there. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. I appreciate yeah. it. It was fun. Thanks for having us. Yep, thanks for having us. We'll have to do it again. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. Yeah. See you.